So if you are new to Hermes and you don't own an Hermes bag, maybe one of these favorites might actually appeal to you and you might want to look into it. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my favorite Hermes bags that are understated. Well, really, anything that isn't the Birkin, Kelly or Constance to me is understated. I'm going to list all my favorite bags that Hermes offers. Um, Hermes actually has quite a lot of bags, so I haven't even mentioned everything. They have a really good variety of bags. There's pretty much a bag for everyone and every kind of lifestyle. Before I dive into all my favorite understated Hermes bags, uh, if you aren't already subscribed to my channel and you do love luxury videos and if you especially love Hermes, then I would love if you would hit that subscribe button below and also the bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos, which is twice a week on a Wednesday and on a weekend. Before I start off with um, my favorite understated Hermes bags, um, I do have my Birkin 30 here. So obviously we're not gonna be talking about the Birkin Kelly or the Constance because they definitely are not understated. They are spoken about as being investment bags. They are the top three, especially the Birkin and the Kelly, most especially. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know that I still have my coupon code with 7 Rue Paradise, which I have spoken about on my channel many, many, many times. It is the only Hermes bag insert that I would recommend for your Hermes bags. So if you are in the market to get an insert for your Birkin, your Kelly, or your Evelyn, then I definitely recommend that you go ahead and purchase one of the 7 Rue Paradise inserts. They are just the best for your bags spoken about it before so I'm not gonna hammer on about it but my coupon code to get 30 euro off is POF 30 and then if you're after two inserts you can get 70 euro off you just enter POF 70 at checkout but just a note um, to follow me on Instagram because if there are any special offers that I have um, sometimes I do giveaways and they're only on Instagram so yeah head over to my Instagram personal fleek and follow me there if you don't already hey guys I just quickly wanted to interrupt this video to let you know that I am currently running a giveaway it's in collaboration with Femi Authentics which is a consignment store I have actually bought from her before so we are collaborating on this giveaway it is only running on Instagram because I'm unable to film like a dedicated giveaway video obviously as you can see I'm still currently healing with my surgery so the giveaway is open until I believe the 21st of February the link to the Instagram uh, post will be in the description bar down below so that'll take you directly to the giveaway post to read all the entry instructions and all that jazz um, but I'll let you guys get back to this video uh, okay, now let's talk about all my favorite understated Hermes bags. Some of the bags I actually physically own, some of them I do not. I'm gonna leave my top three favorite till last. Everything else is just is just gonna be a favorite for me, but my very, very top three, I'm just gonna leave until the end. All right, we are going to start off with the uh, mosaic, and just forewarning, I'm probably gonna butcher a lot of things because I don't speak French at all. I speak pure Australian. First bag is the Mosaic AU or <laughs> shit I've already started butchering everything. Okay the Mosaic AU I'm just gonna spell that out because I know that if I say I sound silly uh, 24 bag. Uh, now this actually has two sizes it has the size 17 and the size 21. My favorite size is the Mosaic uh, 17 and then any other prices I have like USD and Euro. I'm going to put on the screen now the buckle on this mosaic bag represents the floor of FSH FSH uh, Which is the Faubourg store in St. Honoré Did I say that right? <laughs> So yeah, the buckle actually represents that mosaic floor and how this bag actually opens uh, you pretty much kind of push in the middle and then like the little holes of the squares kind of pop there's a really good mechanism in my opinion because you kind of press in the center it kind of pops the front pops out and then it kind of will look like four squares when the bags open I find that to be much easier than the constants the mechanism of opening now the shape of this bag is curved at the base so that does make it a little bit awkward with putting your contents in especially for the size 17 because that's quite small uh the mosaic AO uh AU 2417, that's the full name of the bag in the 17 size. Um, it would be smaller than the Constance 18 in my opinion, just because of that curvature that's sort of on the base, that would kind of limit the 
contents that you can kind of put because you wouldn't be able to get to the full capacity of the base whereas say like if you put a phone in you're still going to have that gap a lot um, at the bottom of the base there this bag can actually be used crossbody as well which i find to be quite convenient and if i'm not mistaken you can kind of pull up the strap and double strap it as well like you can with the constants so yeah i do love this bag i think it's absolutely fantastic the price is pretty high though it's up it's up there with the constants 18 and it doesn't hold its value so that's what kind of puts me off a bit you know it's like just in case you know the bag didn't work out for me if you bought it at full retail price you would definitely be losing money on it but I do think it's a really nice bag um it's definitely something that I am considering so if I found the right color uh, I would potentially buy this bag even at full retail price from the boutique I you know if it was the right color I would do it Great bag. I think it's something to definitely consider if you are looking for a crossbody bag. It definitely can go day to night, no problem. It is not just a day bag. It would you'd have no problem using this as an evening bag. Now the next one on my list is the Picoton 18. I love the Picoton 18. I also love the Picoton 22. But yeah, the Picoton 18, I do love this bag because I think it's super cute. I also find that it can easily be worn for the day and for the night, just because of the size of it in particular with the Picoton 18. But also the Picoton 22, I feel like that can work um, as a night bag, especially if it's in gold hardware. The gold hardware really makes it much more elegant in my opinion but silver hardware is still great as well it just makes it a little bit more casual i find silver hardware on a picotin this usually is in clemence leather sometimes you can get it in maurice leather which is a bit of a smaller grain than clemence and a bit more firmer they also have another option the tressage which has got the um kind of tressage handle and it's in epsom that is a bit more expensive because of the tressage handle even though it is in epsom which is a cheaper leather but the detailing makes it more expensive but this bag has great capacity to it. It fits a ton, like it fits a, a lot for an actual small bag. I would say that this fits well and truly more than my Kelly 25, no doubt. It is almost, it's, it fits less than my Birkin 30, that's for sure. But it does get, cl it gets close, you know, it does get close. The only downfall is that it doesn't have a strap. It is exclusively a top handle bag. There is a way that you can attach a strap. And I do have a strap from, um, in a bag shop. I, it's in my cup and I can't get it. My son's asleep, but I'll put a picture up on the screen of the strap attached. So you can attach a strap. The only pitfall when you attach a strap is that the bag kind of sits a bit open because the way that the strap is, the bag just ends up being more open. That's the only thing that's a bit bothersome for me. But when the bag is um, like this, like when it's in the crook of your arm, when you're hand holding it, it does stay closed. So there's no problems there. Uh, yeah. Very good price point, in my opinion, for an Hermes bag as well. It's in that lower end. It's, you know, in that 4000 price point. And then you at least get to ex experience, like, the craftsmanship and whatnot. I also feel like the Picatin is becoming more and more known. It's getting a lot of demand, that's for sure. The Picatin 18 is very sought after. So it's picking up momentum. It holds its value very well in the resale, the resale market. Um, so, yeah. This is a bag that I do love. It's not in my top three, even though I own it, but I do love this bag as well. I think it is very cute. Okay, the next one is the Mini Belide. I don't have the Mini Belide, but I'm just gonna show you the Belide 27. So the Mini Belide is smaller than this, quite obviously. It is probably like about two thirds the size of it. Probably ends about there, probably just falls underneath that part there. Uh, it is a very cute bag, the Mini Belide. I'll put that down so I don't confuse you. It's got a little cute top handle. Can't go in the crook of your arm. It is really just a mini bag. Can be worn crossbody, which is very cool. Removable strap as well. Uh, it also comes in Berenia too. Sometimes you can get the Mini Belide in Berenia. The capacity of the Mini Belide is small, quite obviously. It does fit more than a Constance 18, if I'm not mistaken. It's a very cute bag, understated, but it's still got the classic silhouette because the Belide, and this is actually looks like the 1923 Belide because the Belide was the first bag that Hermes ever released in 1923, and the Mini Belide is the miniature size model of that essentially. So it's got the same making of the 1923 bag. Whereas my Belize 27 is actually the bag that they released more firmly as an actual ladies handbag. And I believe it was in 1994, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's when they actually came out with this shape. But the first traditional shape was the 1923 shape, and that's what the Mini Belide is modeled after, but just in a very cute size. 
for the price point, you're really not getting a great value for money, to be honest, um, in Chev leather compared to this one. This is in Epsom, which is $8,755. You're paying about $1,000 less and you're getting a much, much, much smaller bag, like a much smaller. So that's kind of the only downfall with that is that price point. I feel like you're not getting the best value for money in contrast to the Believe 27, but it is still a cute bag and it pays homage to the house as well, being that it's modeled after the 1923 Believe. The next one is the trim duo in the 24 size, because there is a trim 31. I'm not sure if it's a duo, can't remember, but yeah, I only like the trim duo 24 size, because it's a smaller size. This is actually a reinterpretation from the trim bag, which is actually has been around for a very long time, but then it was discontinued. So they've essentially brought it back from the archives and then kind of, you know, reinvented it in a, in a way, because the trim duo actually has a long uh, adjustable crossbody strap whereas the original trim bag was really just like a baguette sort of bag that kind of sat up here um, but the, the duo one is the one that I like because it's got two compartments so it's you know either side kind of a bit like the pochette Matisse in a way the two compartments and then it locks over with that little latch long strap but adjustable so it can actually be made into a shorter strap not really probably into the baguette sort of style where it sits up high but um, I do like the fact that it is a crossbody bag and I like the fact that it is adjustable because I always have issues with the lengths of crossbody straps being way too long. But I just like the fact that it's really understated, but it's also from the, um, you know, first handbags that Hermes ever really was making, you know. So I like that, you know, that tribute to it, you know, that they brought it back from the archives. I do really like that. It's a bit nostalgic sort of thing. This is definitely the kind of bag that doesn't hold the hold its value in the resale market because it's only just come back and it's not exactly a style that appeals to everyone now that it's been reinterpreted and modernized. It definitely, in my opinion, suits more colors. So I do like that it's in the Rose Azalee. I've seen it in the Vert Cricket. I've also seen it in Lime. And I think those are the kind of colors that are really fun on that kind of bag. It's also very, very versatile being that it's a crossbody bag, easy access to get in and out as well. Not too fiddly of a buckle. Um, the price on that is $8,035 Australian. So it is again on the pricey side, but it does fit a decent amount. Um, would fit more than the mini bolide, but there's also more detail that goes into the trim duo. Like it's got those two compartments, the gold hardware, like the gold hardware or silver hardware buckle. There's definitely a lot more detail to it. So that's why the price is higher than the mini bolide that I just mentioned. And then the next one is the Cinetic, Cinetic, Cinetic. Um, now this is a very, very cool bag. I like that it's like a lunchbox kind of shape. This would definitely take you day to night. It does look like it's more on the night side. It looks like it's more of an evening bag, but I think that you could use this as a day bag as well. And the reason I say it's more of a night bag is because of that chain strap that it has, and it's not a removable chain strap. It's got a little top handle. Can't be using the crook of the arm though. It's exclusively, literally just top handle. Very cute lunchbox size. Yeah, it's got the asymmetrical buckle. Um, comes in, I think, this one they actually do it in like a duo hardware, like you can get it in palladium hardware with gold hardware in the buckle as well, like it's uh, doubled hardware, but then you can also just get like just gold hardware or palladium hardware. It is offered in Epsom and then in Chev leather, and I think you can also might be able to get it in Tadalact. I can't remember exactly, or it might have even been box calf that I've seen it in, but I know the price in Chev leather, I believe this was in Chev, is uh, 13905 so it is very expensive expensive this is quite an expensive bag it doesn't hold it's it doesn't hold value in the resale market that's for sure the capacity of this bag seems quite fair for that kind of design of bag being like it's more of an evening bag um it might fit about the same as a constance 18 it's also very open inside so i think that also is an advantage as well to helping to fit your contents in because you're not having to play around with different compartments in a small structured bag it's not in my top favorites but i do like it i think that it's the way that the design of the bag is it just it looks very um elegant but still possible to wear as a day bag um yeah i just i just like the creativity and the artisticness with that actual bag that's pretty much what appeals to me is the artisticness um but the price point really definitely puts me off it is at that price point you're pretty much paying for a kelly bag but with less practicality in my opinion because the synetic doesn't have as much uh 
versatility as what a Kelly bag has. Next one is the mini Veru bag. Now I'm actually referring to the one with the chain strap, but I actually do like the new one that they've come out with, which is a canvas strap. This um, is offered in, I believe, uh, permabrass, gold hardware and palladium hardware. It does have a chain strap that is not removable. It is also short as well. So I did get to try this on in store uh, back in, I think it was 2018. And um, it does sit high. You pretty much can't use this crossbody. It's pretty much similar to the Synetic. If you do, it's gonna be sitting up very high on you. The uh, latch closer, closure is fairly relatively easy to use. Once you get the hang of it, it is fairly easy to use because it is not exactly like, say, the Constance, right? The Constance buckle is easy to use, but it's also easy to scratch your bag because when you try to pick it up, you can accidentally scratch the buckle. Whereas the Veru, the actual latch is easy to grab, twist, and open. You're not scratching the bag at all, you know? It just takes a little bit of getting used to knowing the actual latch. It is an open bag, there is no compartments inside, which is exactly what it would need because it is a very, very small bag. The capacity of this is actually less than the Constance 18, so yeah, it is a very, very small bag. I feel as though the um, the Vuru chain, mini Vuru chain, can actually be used as a day bag. I feel like, yeah, you'd have no problem using it as a day bag. It is more inclined as a night bag. The Vuru with the canvas strap, the mini Vuru that they've come out with with the canvas strap, does seem like it's more of a day bag. The mini Vuru and the chain, I definitely like it. Price point, I don't like it because I know it doesn't hold its value in the resale market. If I were to get that bag, I definitely would go in the resale market for sure because it just, yeah, you could just make massive savings on it. Whereas um, buying it new, it's like 12, like I said, $12,000. So you're getting up there in price. It is more expensive even than, well, it's about the same price as a Constance 18 and it fits less. But it is a very nice bag. I think it's very artistic as well, quite creative. Uh, it has feet on the bottom too, which is a good thing as well, having feet on the bottom of your bag. They're very shallow though, but still, nonetheless, it's feet. But yeah, that's enough about that one. Um, moving on to the next one um, is the 2002 20 bag. This comes in two sizes as well. So yeah, the 2002 20. They also have a 2002 26. I only like the 20 because um, it's like a bit of a north-south design. And I feel like if you go with the 26, uh, the north-south design, and then with the extra width, just makes it too much of an overwhelming bag, in my opinion. If it wasn't so north-south, it would be okay. But this is actually, again, another bag that's been brought back from the archives. So it was a bag that you know, Hermes did a long time ago. They discontinued it, and then they brought it back. Uh, it's named the 2002 because... Back when they were first creating it, they they named it that being that this was a futuristic bag. The buckle's kind of cool, like it kind of lips up. Interesting mechanism, but it's actually very easy. Once you actually learn it, it is an extremely easy mechanism. So I did get to try this on in store and play with the bag. And, now, and when my sales associate taught me how to actually open the bag, I was like, wow, this is the easiest buckle I've ever encountered. So I definitely love that the most about the bag, that it's easy to get in and out of the bag with that buckle. Um, it does have a back pocket as well, which is very cool, and adjustable strap too, so it can be worn crossbody, but it can be shortened for shoulder and that sort of thing, and that's a great perk as well. Given that there's quite a lot of versatility to the bag, it's got the pocket, it's got the adjustable strap, it's north-south design, so it's bigger than the Constance 18. It is more expensive than the Constance 18, but I feel that for the actual bag itself, you're getting a lot for the price compared to like the Constance 18. But... At the same time, it also doesn't hold its value in the resale market. So even though I feel like it's priced fair, the downfall is that it doesn't hold its value. So you're better off buying it in the resale market and saving money. The next bag in the list is the Halzan Mini. Now, only the Halzan Mini, because they do have another size, the Halzan 31, and I'm not a fan of that. I feel like in that size, it's just... It's a bit too big for all the options that this bag sort of has because this bag can actually be used as a tote bag and then you can use it as a crossbody bag, shoulder bag, and then you can also use it as a clutch. So you can completely remove the strap and use it as a clutch. But I feel like in the Halzan 31, the clutch just isn't very cute. Whereas in the mini, I feel like using it as a clutch is very cute and using it as a tote bag is cute. Yeah, I just feel like that bag just looks cuter in a mini size. Um, the actual handles, I believe, were modelled after um, the saddle stirrups, you know, where you, put your, where you put your shoes in, where you put your feet in on the stirrups of the saddle. 
So it does pay homage again to the equestrian nature of Hermes. Uh, price point, I don't have the exact price, but I re believe it's around about $6,000 Australian. Again, this is another bag that doesn't hold its value in the resale market, but the price point is still fair at retail price as well. So if you were to pay retail price, it's also not too bad, um, but it is less you know, pre-loved and that sort of thing because it doesn't tend to hold its value. I, the only thing I don't really like about it is that sort of buckle part. I feel like that can look a little bit, I don't know, it, it's just not as uh, attractive. But it also makes sense because, again, it kind of pays homage to the saddle shape, you know, being that the stirrup is like the model, like the, the handle is modeled after the stirrups sort of thing. So I can kind of understand the design for it. Um, bag overall though, with that aside, I do, I do like it. I like the versatility most of all, and it does fit a decent amount as well. The next one is the A-Line bag. Now this one, in the beginning, I didn't like it and I was like, ooh, it looks kind of ugly. It reminds me of the bags that the sales associates use, which it does actually. It does look like the bags that they wear, you know, um, but as time went on, it kind of grew on me and what really sold me on it and why I now actually do like the bag is the closure. If you were to wear that bag crossbody and you were traveling, no one would be able to get into the bag. Um, I would definitely go with probably a fun color in it or even like cray. It says Hermes Celia on it and that's actually in a blind stamp as well. So again, it kind of pays homage to the house as well. It is sort of like a bit more equestrian sort of looking. Do now have two models, the long strap and the short strap. So just keep that in mind if you are looking to buy this bag. Uh, the price is actually very, very reasonable as well. And it is in Swift leather. They do also do Berenia, which would be more expensive, but it is harder to get in Berenia. It is pretty much the same price as the Mini Evelyn, but I prefer the A-Line than the Mini Evelyn. Obviously I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with the Mini Evelyn because I love it, but I can't use it because the strap is too long. I have to use a completely different strap with it. But um, the Mini Evelyn just has like a little latch over the top and it means that your contents are kind of secure, but they're not really the most secure that they can be, especially if you want to use it as like a carefree bag when you're traveling or with your kids, you just don't want to have to worry about your stuff. Um, whereas A-Line on the other hand, yeah, it just does all the right things because it just closes up perfectly. But yeah, enough said about that one. Uh, moving on to the next is the Mini Lindy. Of course, I love the Mini Lindy. I love it. I couldn't put it in my top three because I don't own it to really have experienced it yet, but I think it's a great bag. I'm not a fan of the Lindy 26 or the Lindy 30. Lindy 26 is okay-ish, kind of okay-ish. I like it, but I kind of don't. But the Mini Lindy, I definitely love. It is so cute in that mini size. Um, crossbody strap as well. Not adjustable, not removable. That's probably the only downfall that it's not removable. Uh, typically in Clemence leather, but you can also get it in Swift leather. It's in gold hardware, palladium hardware. It is a hard to get bag though. It is hard to get, seriously. I've tried to buy this on the website so many times and someone keeps beating me to it or multiple people keep beating, it, beating me to it. Um, I've asked my sales associate and I haven't been able to get it. I think I even asked when it first came out. It's a very spacious, it does look like the opening and closing is fiddly, but it's not. You pretty much just don't have to put the sangles on. You can just leave them hanging out. Um, but I think it's a very cool bag, uh, very secure as well. Your contents, especially if you want to really lock it up, makes your content super duper secure. But yeah, I do like it. I think it's a super cute bag. Hopefully I can add it to my collection soon. Uh, the next one is the Her Bag, but only in the Pegasus. I am not a beast fan of the Her Bag, to be honest. I only like it in the Pegasus because of that Pegasus print. Again, it pays homage to the house. The Pegasus was a design that they've had on their scarves as well for a very long time. So it's traditional Hermes. So I do like the, uh, the Her Bag Pegasus. As for the actual Her Bag itself, I'm not the biggest fan. I do find that the opening and closing is a little bit fiddly. It's kind of like the Kelly bag, but you can kind of close the flap over and just leave it sitting there like what you do in the Kelly, but it's not the most secure because it can kind of pop back off again. So yeah, that's kind of the only downfall about that bag. Um, also, the Hunter, Hunter leather can feel a bit stiff and firm until it kind of starts to soften up with use. So that's another downfall, but over time it does uh, soften up and does become a bit more comfortable, or does become more comfortable. Um, but yeah, her bag Pegasus is something that I do like, only in the Pegasus. I don't think I'd add a her bag unless it was actually had some kind of limited edition um, 
design on it. Um, almost at the end of the list. Okay, the next one is, okay, the garden party. I have said in one of my videos that it's probably a bag that I'll never add to my collection. Um, to be honest, I don't like, really like the garden party in the full leather. It has started to grow on me a little bit, I'm not going to lie. The Garden Party 30 in the leather has started to grow on me. But I actually do like the Garden Party 30 in the canvas. I like the canvas and leather combination. Um, I think that they have some really nice colours as well. You can get like, yeah, different colours like a lime for the canvas and then the leather will be in the colour gold. Um, then you can also get like neutral ones where you get gold leather and then... Um, you know, beige canvas. Uh, yeah, I, I do like the canvas version of the Garden Party 30. However, it does make me a bit paranoid being a canvas bag because leather I find easier to care for and clean, but canvas, yeah, I don't know. I'm a bit funny with canvas because it can stain and mark and then it is harder to clean without professional help. So that kind of annoys me because I like to just maintain my bags and then send them for a spa when they really need it. Now moving on to my final three favorite bags. So I actually do own these. And the first one, I suppose like it kind of is, has the word Kelly in it, but it's not a Kelly bag. So I feel like it's still an understated Hermes bag and it is the Kelly Dance. Now the strap is still in my cupboard and I can't get to it, but it does have a strap so you can use it as a belt bag, but then you can also use it as a crossbody bag and you can also use it on the shoulder where you kind of double strap it and I think that that's super cool. Um, some people say that the length of the strap with this crossbody can be a bit too long. I do tend to agree somewhat. I feel like I can kind of get away with the length. It's a bit, I feel like it's not as bad as the mini Evelyn was on me, but you can just kind of shorten the strap uh, length by just pulling up the handle, tying a twilly on it. Um, you could also just punch an extra hole in the strap as well if you want to. I haven't, I'm thinking about doing it, but I'm just a bit paranoid about that because it kind of is like altering your bag in a way. The Kelly Dance, I think it's a fantastic versatile bag. I love all the ways that you can wear the bag. I love that it's also very like casual feeling as well, but it's still got Kelly vibes because it's got that Kelly um, buckle on the front. So it's reminiscent of a Kelly bag, but without the top handle. And yeah, I, I just really, really like this bag, especially in this color as well. Um, I've been reaching for it quite a lot. Um, I also like that it's very spacious. It fits about the same. Yeah, actually, you know what? It fits the same as a Kelly 25 that I actually own. It, I, it does fit the same. Um, maybe only like, you know, maybe only a touch less if I don't want to like overfill it sort of thing. But I feel like with this kind of bag, you can kind of get away with like filling it to full capacity because it's a lot more like relaxed on the closure. Whereas like the Kelly, the Kelly bag is very taut on the closure. This feels a lot more relaxed where you can kind of get away with filling it up a little bit more. Um, it does have a base at the bottom, but it's like kind of floppy. <laughs> it's a very, very funny, strange base that it's not firm, but it does give some structure to the base of the bag somewhat anyway. So um, it's also in the Celia style. So it's outside stitch. That's the only way that you can get the Kelly dance is in the Celia style. Retail price on the Kelly dance is, um, I forgot to show you what, how it looks inside, but yeah, it's got like a pocket inside. Uh, the retail price is $10,620 Australian. It is hard to get. It is a very hard to get bag. Um, they actually don't make much. They make far less of this than they make of the mini Lindy. It, um, yeah, they make less of this than they make of the Burke and the Kelly, the concerts. So it is a harder bag to get. So even though it's understated, it's almost pretty much harder to get than the Burke and Kelly or Constance. Um, I did have to pay a premium when I bought this in the resale market. I paid about $1,600 Australian, which I don't like to do. I don't like to pay a big premium for especially bags that are not a Birkin or a Kelly. Um, but I don't see myself selling this bag. I really feel like this potentially could stay in my collection forever. That's just how much I love the versatility of this bag. So even though I paid a premium, you know what? Like if you're not planning on selling the bag and you think that this bag is it, that you're going to keep it, then paying that premium really isn't that big of a deal because as the years go on, prices go up and up and up. And this is actually a bag that they brought back. They discontinued it for 
quite a few years, or yeah, a decent amount of time, they discontinued it and then they brought it back. So, you know, you never know when your final opportunity is to actually buy this bag, when it, if it could get discontinued again. That does kind of affect resale price, to be honest, when bags are discontinued. But like I said, I really do love this bag. Um, and I don't see myself selling it. Uh, it is in Evercolor leather. That's what they brought it back as. The Kelly Dance 2. Done in Evercolor leather. Before it was done in Swift leather. But it is a really, really great bag. I just love all the ways that you can wear it. And then the next one is my Mini Ruli. So this is actually in Berenia leather. But uh, typically you get the Mini Ruli in Evercolor. So Berenia is actually more expensive. And um, I just love this bag. Like... I love, the, I love the fact that it's actually in Berenia leather. It's in Berenia Forberg, so this is actually the new version of Berenia. They still do the traditional Berenia, which is smooth, but this one's got a grain to it, so it makes it a bit more scratch resistant. Um, it has started to patina, and that's why you can kind of see that bit of that unevenness in the color. So Berenia is definitely not for the faint-hearted. If you don't like scratches and you don't like the fact that your bag can look slightly uneven in uh, color, then definitely don't get a Berenia bag. But for me, I love it. I appreciate it. It is kind of like a heritage leather, even though it's not the traditional Berenia smooth Berenia. It's still somewhat a traditional heritage leather because of the fact that it's still Berenia. But yeah, the Mini Ruler itself, the Mini Ruli, I love the bag because it's just very versatile. It's got a back pocket. Uh, the strap can be worn crossbody. You can also shorten it to wear on your shoulder. Um, can't be removed. That's the only downfall. But you can um, wear it double strapped as well. It's got uh, two compartments inside. So you've got the two main compartments. But then you've also got little pockets as well on the inside here. And then you've got another one at the back there. So I think that it's a very fantastic handbag. Like... It's casual. It can also be an evening bag too. I personally have no problem using this as an evening bag. I do take it out for dinner. Uh, I do love the closure as well on the Ruli. So it's the same for the Ruli 23 and this mini Ruli. It just opens and closes by pushing in the flap like that. So that's probably one of the greatest things I love about the bag is that it's so easy to use. Especially when I got my kids with me. It's just easy to get in and out of the bag. And yeah, I think it's a fantastic bag. Definitely keep it in mind if you kind of want that silhouette of the Constance but you don't want to pay as much for a Constance or you're having a trouble, like having a difficult time getting the Constance, you probably find that it might be easier to get the Mini Ruli. In Australia, the Mini Ruli is actually hard to get, but I know in the US it is an easier to obtain bag. So it is possible to, to ask for a, ask for a mini ruley and then wait list for it and you might not have to wait very long. Um, now the final one, which is my probably my absolute yeah, I'd say it's my absolute favorite Hermes understated bag. And it's the Belay 27. This bag has been so fantastic. I love that it's in cray. So the color is also perfect. Uh, it's with gold hardware. It does come with a shoulder strap as well. But I just love how lightweight this bag is. Like it just feels like air. It is so, so, so light. But the, um, use, of the, the use of the bag is so easy. It's one zipper. It's completely open inside as well. Like it's not... It's not got like different compartments or anything like that. The strap can't be worn crossbody because it's pretty much the same length as the Kelly strap. But because it's so lightweight, it just sits so perfectly on my shoulder. Like it never falls off my shoulder. I like that it's also got a top handle, but it could also be carried in the crook of the arm as well. So this bag can be used uh, day, no problem. And also night, in my opinion. I definitely think it can transition into a night bag. Uh, this is in Epsom leather. They do also do this in Swift as well, which is a little bit more expensive. And like I said, the Belide was the first bag that Hermes ever created, so it pays homage to the house. Uh, but I really think it's just a fantastic bag. Like, it's, I, I can't even explain it, but it's just so easy to use. It's so light. It's so understated. Like, no one, most people when they look at it, they don't know it's Hermes, but it was the first handbag that Hermes ever created was the Belide. And yeah, it's there's just so many great things about this bag. Like, I just love, love, love it. I do have a review on my channel, or I have done a review, and there will be a review on my channel. But I know I sound like crazy because I say that's my favorite, but I can't explain all the things about it. But it just really is so great. It really, truly is just such a great bag. I could definitely foresee myself adding another one of these, like another Belay 27 in a different color. No doubt about it. Even in Swift. I do think that I prefer it in Epsom because of the structure that it has. And yeah, I just kind of like 
the fact that this is a very structured bag, but I still would like it in Swift as well because I find that with Epsom, I just prefer it in lighter colors, but if I wanted it in a darker color, I probably would be better off going with Swift. Um, it does also have feet too, like how cool are feet? So yeah, I think you're getting really good value for money. Resale market, the Belize 27 actually does hold its value fair, like fairly well. It's only the very old vintage Belize 27s that you can get a bargain on, but for newer Belize 27, it does hold its value somewhat. Like you might be able to save a little bit of money in the resale market, but there may not be a massive savings. So I kind of feel like if you can buy it from the store, probably you should. Uh, so at least then you get the whole store experience and you can try to request a color and everything like that. But yeah, Belize 27, fantastic bag. Love it. It's my favorite understated Hermes bags. Hermes bag. Yes, <laughs> Hermes bags. Yeah, I think I'm going to end this video here. My son has woken up. I am so nasally and it's midnight, so I'm going to go to bed. But um, I hope you enjoyed this video. But otherwise, I will see you guys in my next one. And thanks for watching. Bye.